Welcome back to Honest News. My wife and I would like to thank you for your very touching cards and your many thoughts and your support and prayers during this time. We really appreciate you folks. Your giving, your generosity, your your hearts, we really appreciate all the giving, the sacrifice. We appreciate that so much. Now, oftentimes I think about these mega churches and how they rake in millions of dollars and and uh, and I think about how little is involved when it comes to a heart that's giving as unto the Lord. Many people give to be seen or they give so they can be noticed which is interesting because that's really what our message is going to be on this, uh, this, this evening. And I had no idea that this would tie together, but I'm just going to obey the Lord. We're going to be looking at the the story of the widow and how she gave to into the treasury of the Lord's ministry. And Luke, if you'd like to turn there, Luke chapter 21 and uh, beginning with verse 2. We'll be right back after this. Luke chapter 21, beginning with verse 2. And he saw also a certain poor widow casting in thither two mites. Did you hear that? But he saw something else, too. Look at verse 1. And he looked up and saw the rich men casting their gifts into the treasury. He sees it all, doesn't he? The Lord doesn't miss anything. He saw what the rich were giving, but he also saw what this poor widow was giving. Sometimes we think we're overlooked. Sometimes we think God doesn't see or God doesn't know. Well, he knows. He, God doesn't miss anything, and he keeps, he keeps perfect record, records. How many know that? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we need your help, Lord, to deliver this message, to encourage your people, They're not giving as unto man, Lord. They're giving as unto you. It's your ministry, Lord. In fact, it's all yours. The earth and the fullness thereof. It all belongs to you. 
And we can never, Lord, outgive you, ever. We pray, Lord, that you will bless as we minister your word. We thank you, Lord, for the anointing of the Holy Ghost to help us to share the truth. We ask that you bless, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Luke 21, verse 1. Let's go ahead and read these verses again. This is Jesus, right? Jesus is looking up. And he looked up. And he saw the rich men casting their gifts into the treasury. Hmm. Doesn't miss a thing. Doesn't miss a thing, does he? And he saw also a certain poor widow casting in thither two mites. Listen. And he said, Of a truth, I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast in more than they all. For all of these have of their abundance cast in unto the offerings of God. But she of her penry hath cast in what? She cast in all. Did you hear that, folks? She gave all. She cast in all the living that she had. I pray that this will be a challenge to us. She gave all. She didn't hold back anything. She wasn't worried about her bills, or was she? You know, just because she gave all doesn't mean she wasn't concerned about her bills. Now listen to me, folks. I don't believe in sowing financial seeds. But I do believe this woman gave all because she was putting her trust in God. Notice where she put her, where she put it, right? Where did she put her abundance? Where did she, or her, what she had, I should say, not her abundance. But where did she put it? She gave it to God. She gave it to the Lord. She gave it to the Lord Jesus' ministry. Amen into the offerings of God. So obviously she wasn't looking in some other direction for help. The picture here is a woman that is in need, and she doesn't have enough to pay her bills. Are you listening, people? And she gave all. She gave what she had. Amen. Now, that doesn't mean she's not human. Doesn't mean she didn't worry. She wasn't worried about her life and worried about... No, and we can't say either way, actually. We don't know if she was worried or not. But based upon human nature, here is a widow woman, and 
It could be that she was a new widow woman in the sense she just lost her husband. And she was going to lose it all. She's going to lose everything. She can't pay the bills. And she's giving an offering not to be seen of people. Amen. Not to be noticed by people. But how many know she was doing what she was doing to be noticed by God? You see, I believe this was an act of worship. I believe that she was not just giving the physical. Since she was giving it in the offering of God, I believe she was giving herself. In other words, I no longer have a husband to take care of me. I have no husband to to uh, provide. I'm a widow. She's putting it all on the line, people. What I like about this whole thing is the fact that Jesus saw her do it. Jesus saw her. How comforting. I wonder if the rich men, the rich people saw her. Hmm? I'm going to tell you people, if you're looking to be seen or to be noticed in this world, even in the church, even amongst God's people, you have your reward. But if you give in secret, your heavenly Father will reward you openly. I do believe with all my heart that this was an act of worship. It was an act of surrender. She was giving all. She wasn't putting her trust in what she had, the two mites that she did have. She is giving all to God, putting her trust fully in God. In other words, she's committed. She's not looking back. Sink or swim. Amen. It's going to be God. That's who I'm going to look to. And that's where she put the last of her living. All that she had, she put it in the offerings of God. I, can you think of a better place, people, to look for help? Amen. Just the truth of this gets a hold of you. Jesus says in another place, he says, this is going to be a memorial for this woman. There it is. It's written right there in every single Bible. Even though she wasn't doing it to be noticed, she is written in the pages of history. Amen. You can't outgive the Lord, people. Now, there's nothing in the Scripture that lets us see that God met her needs after she gave all. But if you know God, and you know how He has been with you, how He's taken care of you, then you know He took care of her. Amen be great if there was a place in the scripture that followed up on that and we saw that her needs were taken care of but we know God amen he's faithful I've said this many times that you can have all the money in the world 
But if you don't have God, you have nothing. You have nothing. Absolutely nothing. And sadly, that's what the world wants. More fame, more fortune, more noticeability, but more money. The majority of the world today, they want money. And the Bible says the craving or the the love of money is the root to all evil. Jesus goes on to say, you can't serve God and mammon too. If you look at the context of this whole thing, Jesus deals with seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Don't worry about what you're going to wear, what you're going to eat. Don't worry about these things. The world worries about these things. Now, God's teaching us, brothers and sisters. He's teaching us. In the context of this verse, he goes on to speak of the end times, which we are living in. And the destruction of the temple. The signs of the times and the end, end of the world. The coming of the Lord. Which we are now closer to than they were back then, obviously. If the things that Jesus shared back then were good enough back then, how much more are they needed today? Amen. We need to hear his word. We need to hear his voice. We need to be comforted. We don't know from day to day what's going to happen in this world. Amen. We don't know, people. We do not know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. Amen. Putting your trust in the Lord that's the same thing as faith. And the more faith you have or the more trust you have in God the better off you are. Amen. Only looking to God. Never look to the hand of man. Never look to the the means of this world. Amen. Always look to God. The Bible says he he openeth his hand and he satisfies every living thing. Amen. God opens his hand and he satisfies every living thing. Praise the Lord. His grace is sufficient, more than enough for your need. God's people should never be fretting or worrying, troubled. We should be dependent upon God 
And we're going to be tested. Oh, yes. If we haven't been already, we're going to be tested. Are we going to look to God? Or are we going to look to man? Amen. Praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters, I've been looking to God for years now. And he's been faithful. Praise the Lord. He's never failed me yet. He's never failed me yet. Jesus has never failed me yet. I want the world to know that I love him so. Jesus Christ has never failed me yet. He's never failed me yet. He's never failed me yet. Jesus has never failed me yet. Oh, I want the world to know that I love him so. Jesus has never failed me yet. And he won't. He will not fail you. In fact, think about this for a moment. He can't fail you. He cannot fail. Love never faileth. He cannot fail people. Listen to me. If there's any failure, it's on our part, not on his. Praise God. She gave all. It's our turn. God bless you.